is Donna Schulman, and I am a nurse working as PrEP Clinical Services Manager. The purpose for this video is to assist providers in helping their patients to depathologize the use of pre-exposure prophylaxis for HIV. The normalization of PrEP is an important step towards ending the epidemic, and we hope to facilitate compliance and adherence to PrEP. There are specific guidelines and recommendations by the CDC and New York State AIDS Institute that medical providers can follow when prescribing PrEP. If you're presently prescribing PrEP, you are all likely already very familiar with these guidelines, but I will also provide the link for access to the latest February 2020 New York State AIDS Institute guidelines. This presentation refers to scheduling of patient visits when prescribing TDF, FTC, daily regimen only, and I'll focus on some updates to processes related to the COVID-19 pandemic. The frequency of medical follow-up appointments has often been a barrier to patient compliance and medication adherence for PrEP. The COVID-19 crisis has added another layer of challenge for patients to attend the standard schedule of appointments that allow for prescription refills to be given. In effort to keep healthy individuals at home, it's necessary to look at each patient's situation on a case-by-case -case basis to see if it is feasible to extend the period between medical visits. There are a number of variables to consider when discussing this with your patient. First, we want to look at general health. Previous lab results, including baseline versus recent trend or change in creatinine, urine analysis, hepatitis, and HIV status. Consider age. If the patient is over 40 years old, routine quarterly creatinine is recommended. And hep B status. Patients with chronic hep B need monitoring for potential rebound if and when PrEP is discontinued. We also need to look at medication adherence um, and appointment compliance. If there are barriers, can they be remedied? We may need to delay appointment extension until there is evidence of compliance. There are also financial changes or concerns. Does the patient presently have insurance anticipated to cover duration of prescription? Or is the patient covered by a medication assistance program for the duration of the prescription? And lastly, the sexual health risks. This requires taking a good sexual history to assess for risks of STIs. The framework for taking a sexual history is available in appendices of the updated clinical guidelines. And we need to review the record of STI history. Also discuss with patients if they have been diagnosed with or treated as a contact to an STI at any site other than your facility. This may not have been disclosed in previous visits. As a general statement, if the patient is in good general health and medication adherent without financial challenges that impact PrEP prescriptions and has no elevated STI health risks, they may be a good candidate for extended duration between medical visits. Each of these factors needs to be evaluated carefully. Our experience has shown us that many patients have had consistently normal lab results, excellent medication adherence, and are financially stable for maintaining PrEP, but have had multiple STIs in the past year. Many patients have reported minimal to inconsistent condom use while on PrEP, representing an ongoing risk for STIs. As providers, we now have another option. There have been some small studies <clears throat> that have suggested that the use of doxycycline 100 milligrams once daily may be somewhat effective prophylaxis for acquiring certain bacterial STIs. There are several large randomized trials happening worldwide to look at this in more detail. However, in the midst of the COVID pandemic, we are in an, <clears throat> and an effort to reduce the needs for patients to seek healthcare in a medical setting, we have now initiated the potential of prescribing doxycycline 100 milligrams, one tab daily to our PrEP patients that meet certain criteria based on available literature. These criteria are, the patient has been diagnosed with two or more bacterial STIs in the past year, including present visit, or the patient has been diagnosed with syphilis more than once in their entire lifetime, and that they have no allergy or contraindication to doxycycline. When either of these criteria are met, PrEP patients are being offered the option of taking doxycycline daily for prophylaxis of other bacterial STIs. If the patient accepts, they are given this prescription in conjunction with and for the duration of their TDF, FTC, PrEP prescription. The patient is always counseled regarding condom use. 
Occasionally, we've had patients that have other medical reasons that preclude their ability to have safe sex with condoms, and we've learned that this may be the first time the patient has disclosed their problem. This then offers the opportunity to have this medical discussion with the patient. The use of doxycycline as prophylaxis has been implemented as a short-term intervention due to the pandemic in effort to keep individuals who are well at home. For the long term, we're awaiting results of ongoing studies to guide us. In conclusion, a patient that has been successful in maintaining health and medication adherence while on PrEP may not necessarily require quarterly medical appointments and flexibility to extend duration between visits for an additional three to six months should be considered. Those patients that are at higher risk for STIs based on the aforementioned criteria may benefit from prophylaxis with daily doxycycline with routine quarterly scheduled testing. References for articles on doxycycline prophylaxis are provided here, as well as references for the New York State AIDS Institute guidelines that include the appendices and checklists and the framework for taking sexual history.